Good afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Thank you for joining us here on Gulfstream today. I'm Gabby Gaudet, joined by Ron Nicoletti, and we are quickly approaching, counting down the days towards the end of the championship meet. But of course, before we get there, a big, big card on Saturday as it was drawn yesterday, a big Florida Derby day. Yeah, I spent the night working on it, so I hope I uh, uh, figured it out. Uh, it's a great card, lots of great horses in there. Looking down, here's a million dollar first time starter. Here's a one one point six million dollar mm -hmm. first time starter. And of course, we have the two best three-year-olds in the country uh, meeting up in the Florida Derby, which is gonna be race 14 on Saturday. It should be a lot of fun. And kind of un uh, unprecedented actually having two undefeated horses in the top two Derby contenders battle it out before we actually get anywhere near Kentucky. So it's gonna be an, a very, very fun weekend. Even the undercard stakes are phenomenal betting races and some of the uh, races in between, as you were mentioning, those made in special ways it took a lot of homework to come <laughs> up with some of those uh, picks, so hopefully it does all pay off on Saturday. Now we'll look at today's uh, card here, and uh, we'll s see our featured wagers and our carryovers as well. And in race one, it does start the 50 cent early pick five. Again, that rolling super high five will not start until race three. So with uh, some of the scratches in both, or not, no scratches in race mm -hmm. one, but with some of the scratches in race two, our rolling super high five starts in race three. As we proceed to race five, the 20 cent rainbow six does kick off just shy of $40,000. And that carryover continues to grow there and race six. On today's program, 50 Cent Late Pick 5 does kick off. Now, if you are like us and you handicap the card for Saturday a couple days in advance and you want to skip some of the lines there, we do have advance wagering available here Friday, April 1st, starting at 11.30 a.m. So come on out here Friday afternoon and uh, make your derby picks, your Florida derby picks, and uh, really you can bet any uh, the the rest of the card as well. My uh, analysis is up already on uh, GhostGreenPark.com, so you can go to that site and check out how I saw the Saturday card and make your decisions, and if you have to bet and on Friday, um, maybe I can help you out a little bit. Good stuff there. We'll start it all off with race one here on today's 10 race program. And as I just mentioned, we do start the 50 cent early pick five. No super high five wagering in the first. But you have a pick five ticket, so let's see the sequence. Well, I'll show you my sequence here. We're going to go three deep in here with the one five and the six. I, I like the one a little bit. We'll talk about that horse along with the five in there. Then you see two deep, three deep, two and two for a $36 ticket. Uh, see if we can nail this uh, thing and uh, uh, get started our day off on a winning foot so you're protecting yourself with the one and six uh in the first leg of the sequence as we do have a very heavy favorite right now early money at three to five but seven to five on the morning line and that is the five black jet first off the claim for trainer kelly breen and stays at this five for a long sprint distance but does drop down to this 12,500 condition i like him primarily because there's not a tremendous amount of pace in this race and he's proven in the past that he can go to the lead and win he can also has he also has the kind of positional speed to maybe stalk the leaders too but he might just be the fastest early horse in the race and just all said and done from there you know you look he ran he won in two lifetime last time stepping up to three lifetime but that's 12-5 level i think the perfect spot for the horse and and certainly the one to beat in the opener tell you why i like the one a little bit but real quick because super secret it was solid when sprinting against this caliber competition here in a Gulfstream Park dur uh, during the fall. Returns, failed to show much, going to put a line through that synthetic uh, race at Turfway Park. He's a sneaky in the race. I mm -hmm. think he's 10 to 1 on the morning line or something, or 9 to 1, whatever he was. He's 9 to 1 now, I'd put it that way. Just wanted to get that horse out there. The other horse I wanted to use on my ticket, along with the 5, it looks like the one to beat. And we do have the 6, Rock Me, again, who gets in with the lightweight 10-pound apprentice there. And he's one that he's been trying to make a grinding run from off of the pace. They were kind of aggressive with him last time out he wasn't fast enough to make the lead and he just seems like a horse that uh, there's a lot of things that need to go his way in order for him to find the winner circle yeah he's dropping a notch on the claim he he's trying to notch that three lifetime of victory at the sixteen thousand dollar level he's tried it and uh, maybe this is the spot today trainer is hendrick chen and as you mentioned the 10 pound apprentice will be riding today i'll throw in the two lee reagan there the primary purpose uh, this kind of the same type of horse as the other one rock me again who he just can 
continues to follow horses home and really uh, doesn't have a tremendous late energy. But uh, I, again, you're kind of grasping at straws beyond the favorite there who figures to be the pace in the race. Right. We'll move on to the second race, though. Nine winners of two lifetime for 30,000. Six furlongs onto the main track. And we do have another heavy favorite. The six wildcat gaze is your eight to five favorite. You and I actually go against her in here. Uh, there, I think there are several other horses that you have to pay attention to. The one Kentucky Dancer is one of them. Getting a class relief from previous uh, experiences there. But last time out, I think you and I were, were talking about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. In the short comment, it right. says bumped repeatedly at the right. start. I didn't really see that happen. No, I went back and looked. We were actually talking about this horse yesterday. It was a $50,000 optional claimer. So on the drop, Dale Romans, Corey Lannery handling the inside post. Uh, I just think this was a logical horse, you know, trying to get cued here and beat the number six Wildcat Gaze. And we'll take a look at the five Playa Zaragoza here. And uh, not her most recent replay in the any limit, but in the race prior to that on the 4th of March. And we'll see. Uh, her kind of uh, rallying from off of the pace and she's down on the kind of the rail there where uh, the rest of the horses were kind of staying out in the two or three path and she did experience uh, the actually it happened a little bit before then uh, she did get into some trouble at the eighth pole and you can't really see her because she's off your screen but she did experience uh, some trouble that was not the right replay. <laughs> Looking back on the 4th of March, excuse me. Uh, so that was the actually the any limit. And yeah. I, I wanted to show the race prior to that where she was bumped and steadied at the 8th pole because I thought she got into a considerable amount of trouble. Uh, and that was going, she was 66 to 1 in there. She was going against Natalie LaRose, who mm -hmm. kind of just drew off from the rest of the field. And now she's meeting easier company. I like her as a French player. She was actually entered in yesterday. Right. And the connections opted to leave her in here. Yeah, I, I did not use her on the ticket today. I thought she was going to run yesterday, but uh, that did not work out. But I did use the two horse in here, little Kate, who's dropping into this condition claimer a after following her $25,000 maiden victory going a mile with a fourth place finish. It was against $35,000 open competition at the distance. Much logical, more logical spot for me today. Carlo Vaccarezza, Jeffrey Sanchez named to ride. Okay, we'll move on to the third race, a maiden 12,500 event, a mile and a 16th on the main track. And we have an even money favorite, the five starship hostility for Alan Iwinski, who did find a, a dis different surface there, went turf to dirt last time out and faced untrue, but they did put the blinkers on her last time out. They dropped her in class. They tried a new surface and it didn't cut it as the favorite. Perhaps untrue was just much the best that day. Can she deliver? Or do you decide to go against her? I had to go against him. Of course, she's a zero for 19 maiden. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try and beat her with the inside horse. We have basically the same trifecta flip-flopping around. Misty Phyllis is the one I'm talking about. Is stretching out to a mile in the 16th. She went up. She tracked the pace. She finished fourth behind aforementioned Starship Hostility. Their recent clash at this one-turn mile. Ralph Zadie, Prentice John Cruz. I like this horse getting the added real estate. I'm not convinced the five Starship Hostility uh, is going to win it. So I, I flip-flop these two selections. But I like uh, your top pick in here, and that's the number seven, Hot. Oh, she was also, uh, talking about Starship Hostility, right. she was also kind of tracking there early, and now she seemed to fade a little bit, or not just, not have the greatest of late energy there, so now you have to think she has to stretch out to two turns, so the mile and a 16th, she probably will go to the lead, she'll probably get pressure from uh, maybe even the seven hot to her outside, so I think there's a couple of negatives that you have to pay attention to with Starship Hostility, where the seven hot is a little bit unknown, uh, she recently ran on the turf. I kind of liked her a little bit in that race and now the Connections decided to keep her going a distance of ground but on a different surface and we very well could see her improve drastically second off the layoff. Yeah, she's a lightly raced daughter of Reddy's image and you mentioned she dropped into the bottom on the main track. She faded on that uh, uh, turf just seven days ago so mm -hmm. I used her on a ticket, did not put her on top and you were right about Starship Hostile. That's why I like Misty Phyllis more. I thought she'd prove mm -hmm. at a distance. And if you're looking at the early pick five or other multi-race sequences, mm. I think those are the two horses that right. you kind of key in right. on to try to protect yourself right. to beat the even money favorite. Right. Exactly. Hopefully make that ticket a little bit more <laughs> valuable yeah. there. Race four on the card, a maiden $50,000 event, a mile and a 16th on the turf. Scratch the five, Cavity, and also the also 
though Ella, the main track only entrant, the eight Senor Casanova. And with that scratch run, I would imagine that the majority of the money is going to go in between the two Bridge of Luck and the three Vegas, who pr seems to be lone speed in here. And I guess we'll start it off with Bridge of Luck because this uh, Colt is three to one on the morning line. So was your second choice beyond five to two and the five cavity? And we'll show a statistic here for the Michael Matz barn on the turf uh, with 180 plus day layoffs. Not the strongest, 9% in a negative ROI over the past five years. So oftentimes, Ron, we see his horses kind of improve second, third, a race off the layoff. Yeah, this horse showed a lot of promise in its races. Actually, one here at Gulfstream, one I believe at Laurel, and uh, just went, uh, uh, showed promise in all of them. I'm going to get watch this rough race mm -hmm. this time. I put it on my ticket because if it beat me, I didn't want to get beat out, but I have it in third. Okay, and you up for the three Vegas here with the scratch of the five cavity, who, again, I, I think he's going to be lone speed, but he needs to maybe reserve a little bit more energy than what he did last time Well, out. yeah, he's hoping to stretch that speed to the wire. He set the pace in a really weak and finished behind a horse that's not running today, Gavity. Cavity last time out, Augustin Bezerra, Carlos Olivero in the saddle. Does look like lone speed to me, and that's why I went that way. I don't know how did you went with the number four horse in a big bend. I just hope he can, the Vegas can slow it down no. a little bit earlier, and it, maybe it'll give him the ability to do that today with the scratch of Cavity, who did figure to maybe pressure him at some point. And I actually like Vegas maybe a, a touch better than what I initially did with the scratch of Cavity. And, and the four, Big Ben, I thought, was now up against it because the picture of the race, I thought Vegas would go to the front end. Uh, obviously, Cavity would pressure him a bit. They'd go a decent early fraction. Maybe that pace would come back to them and maybe set up for a horse like Big Ben to turn the tables. But uh, this will be his third start off of the layoff since November. They dropped him down to the $50,000 level. Now I like the fact that Corey Lannery hops aboard. The tra trainer jockey combo have found a lot of success here in South Florida. And he's just one who you don't have your favorite in here, so really anything can happen. Yeah, it can happen. He did come by. He was a late running fourth last time out, so you would think that he needs some kind of pace to run at. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly uh, this horse can be a part of the ticket. Uh, I'm leaning towards uh, the three Vegas, as you said, because it looks to me like the lone speed. And as we mentioned throughout this last couple of weeks, speed has been good on, on the turf here. So uh, a way to go. We saw a horse yesterday, a couple of horses yesterday do very well with speed on the turf course. And the six Hurricane Ramiro did absolutely no running in debut, but that was on a sloppy sealed track. And you'd have to think that the Connections wanted to get this horse to the turf in debut because it was initially carded for the turf. And he is by Super Saver, but he's out of a mare who was unraced and it makes him kin to a three-time turf winner who made just about $225,000. So I'm putting faith in Nick Zito that maybe this horse, they all along wanted to get to the turf. We'll see how that works out today in the scratch of the number five. A cavity uh, turns that race around, like you said. And that's races one through four. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to dive right into the Rainbow Six and uh, a fun sequence today. I don't have a single, but we'll get to that ticket in just a moment. Welcome back to Gulfstream today. Now diving into the Rainbow Six, we do have a carryover just shy of forty thousand dollars today. It was, it felt like it was yesterday that we were given the mandatory payout. Now we're already up to forty thousand. Starting to build. We had a horse that was alive yesterday for the whole uh -huh. jackpot. It was an outsider, but uh, still uh, someone that was able to figure out how to be alive in the final leg. So we'll see yeah. how that works out this afternoon. And we started off in race five on this 10 race program. We'll see my ticket here, $64.80. And using two horses to start us off, the five and the six. And the next leg, using the one and the seven. And using three horses in both, uh, or in the rest of the sequence, the two, five, ten, two, eleven, twelve, one, six, seven, with the one, four, ten. 
And we will start it off here with race five, a maiden 12,500, race five and a half furlongs onto the main track. And the six, Papa Bravo, was your six to five heavy favorite in here. And I'm, I respect this horse, but I'm backing myself up with the five Aventus. Yeah, I mean, Papa Bravo's dropping to this level in first start since finishing. Uh, had trouble, was bumped and bothered at the start. That was against $30,000 maidens at Churchill back on November 14th. Uh, you mentioned Dale Roman, and uh, you know, this horse looks like the logical choice working steadily up at palmettos but coming off a layoff is coming in off of the layoff and uh last seen running against moon Tige, who we saw put in some really solid races here at Gulfstream. and the reason why i kind of opted for adventus over your heavy favorite is because he's got recency and he's got more speed uh and i think that's going to be something that he can play to his advantage today when he was coming in off of that july layoff back in february he kind of showed speed and was beaten significantly but he was well bet he was three to one and and he showed enough speed to make the lead in that race. So I'm thinking now on a class relief and recency on his form, he's just going to go to the lead and say, catch me if you can. Yeah, I agree. And he's a four-year-old son, a three-year-old son, excuse me, of Colonel John. And he's a major player against this level on the turf, I really believe. I mean, on the main track. And the two absinthe, if you're looking to construct your rainbow six, I wouldn't say, if you have more funds, maybe throw in a first time starter like this. But we do have a stat here for the barn over the past five years. And you look at 26%, 21% on the year, the barn does extremely well. Jameson right. Service is a fantastic trainer. Uh, but with five year, uh, with the dirt maiden claimers in debut, not really the strongest, only four for 40 and a negative ROI because they are so well bet because it's such a good barn. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have it in the third spot like you did too. Yeah. I had some concerns with it. It's a four-year-old son of uh, Zoffin, who was by Umbrella making his career debut. Uh, you saw the stats there, so I, I didn't really know which way to go. And 12-5, mm -hmm. uh, I said, uh, I, I agree with you totally. Use those two horses in your Rainbow Six ticket. Hope we can limp through the first leg of the sequence and race six does kick off the 50 cent late pick five. Now you have a ticket. So let's see it. Let's see it. And uh, I was chuckling when I saw your ticket because in race number eight, you didn't even use this horse. And that is the five horse, Tiz Jet, who's my single in the <laughs> afternoon. So uh, that's why I was chuckling. You see it too deep. And we'll talk about these two horses in just a moment in race number six, three. As I mentioned, Tiz Jet, I like this horse this afternoon. Three deep, and I went four deep in the last race. Uh, three, four, five, and six. And one of those horses, my long shot to the day, was going to be like 40 to one. I don't know if I could win it, but if it just as it did, I had to cover myself. But uh, that is my ticket, 36 bucks. One of us won't hit this. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Either you're going to hit the pick five or I'm going to hit the pick six or maybe neither. <laughs> but uh, a nice single there, and we'll get to that leg of the sequence in just a moment. But race six does start us off that non-winners at three for 16,000. A mile and a 16th on the turf. And the whole complexion of the race now changes with the scratch of the five Are We Not Men, a horse who figured to be close to the pace and a horse who figured to take a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, he was even money on the morning line. So scratching out changed the whole uh, uh, complexion of the race, as you mentioned. I did go into number seven, Smokey Brown, is stepping up to the next level. Parlayed a late rally into a 16-2 lifetime score at the distance. John Toscano Jr., Luis Saez, the top this son of Big Brown. But I'm leaning more towards the one now that you have on top with that scratch, and that is Dreaming of Frank, because that horse has some speed. I think he's going to be lone speed, uh, and especially with the scratch of the five. Are we not men, like I said, figured to be close. And I like Smokey Brown, and I use him. I respect him in the exacta, but he just seems like such a deep, dead-end closer that just doesn't have a tremendous amount of speed. And is this race going to be conducive to his running style? Sometimes we see in these shorter fields, horses kind of suck into the rest right. of the field, or sometimes Sometimes they're just lengths off the pace and right. they just don't run out of real estate and, and time to close. Uh, but he has the credentials to do it. But the one dreaming of Frank, I, I do think that uh, he'll be okay at this distance. The last time he went uh, the mile, it was against lower level uh, claimers, but that was obviously off of a, a layoff from August to October. Uh, here at Gulfstream, though, he actually broke his maiden going the mile. Yeah. And he went to the lead and won by about five lengths. Now, is he the same horse? Probably not. But I would 
would not uh, throw this horse off your tickets now, stretching out to two turns. He got, has a good bottom from his last race at five furlongs. Yeah, I actually wanted to flip-flop them, you know, which I, I, I just scratched into Smokey Brown, but Dreaming of Frank, as you saw, my ticket, these are the two I used. I closed it out with the four Umberto. I think he's, he's got to bounce back today. Uh, it's a little easier spot for him, but uh, uh, he's going to be a bit of a price in there, I believe, behind those two we just mentioned. Okay, race seven on the card is 16,000 non-winners of two lifetime event a mile there on the turf course and uh, this was a race where I thought you could go in multiple different directions and we have a replay of Holy Scat who is five to two on the morning line and the 10 B line so we'll go back and take a look at this race and the three Holy Scat is there the number th uh, the number three horse down <laughs> on the inside and the eight B line as well and now, Holy Scott's just kind of tracking the speed of uh, Angora that day who went to the lead and never looked back. Now, I will say, speed was holding very well that day, and uh, we saw a couple of uh, speedy horses fare very, very well. I thought it was a stronger performance from Beeline, who had to close into that uh, okay pace, and uh, I thought just showed a lot better late energy closing from off of it into a speed favoring turf course. Uh, so I'm giving a little bit of an edge to Beeline today. Yeah, I mean, I got both of those, with the Holy Scat and Beeline on my ticket this afternoon, but uh, I went with the one on the inside mobilized, and I'll tell you why, dropping to this level today, which is $16,000, turning back to mile, went up, dual for the lead, weakened to finish six it was against 32 lifetime claimers going a mile in 16. fernando abreu jose lascano had the inside post i think this horse is going to be part of the pace scenario today she definitely will she'll show speed from that real post I, my only concern with her is uh the four roads but it's tiger now stretching out to the mile where she kind of tracked the speed last time out i would imagine they might she might be fast enough to go with a horse like mobilize and will mobilize this hand be kind of forced down on the inside there so i went with thinking that that pace scenario might happen, I thought the two Hope Faith Joy could really benefit from a situation like that, who is kind of a dead end closer. And she just needs to pop up, pop out of the gate a little bit quicker and just get into a good early position. I'm not saying she's going to be anywhere near the right. lead, but sometimes she's broken, uh, she's uh, gotten out of the gate a little bit slowly, and it's to her detriment. She just needs to be well placed. And she's got a nice uh, inside post this afternoon, so she can, can secure that tracking. Uh, position or uh, doesn't want to run maybe with the inside horse but certainly can uh, carve out a nice trip from there and she is their choice on the morning line so uh, one five and ten for me two ten and five for you we'll see how that works out all right race eight on the card a starter optional claiming event a mile on to the turf course and I this race we have the five tis jet this is your single <laughs> in the rainbow six I saw this race to be a little bit uh, pretty wide open actually yeah. Well, you know, this is where you have to make a stand. And you I do. went with the five tis jet. I'll tell you why. Drop and turn it back to a mile. Followed her second place finish. That was in the seven and a half furlong. Mrs. Presidentress comes back, runs a really nice fourth behind a repeat winner, Shiawasi. That's a fifty thousand dollar optional claimer going a mile in the sixteenth. I just thought of those races. This horse looked best to me in this spot. So I, I was searching for a single. I said, oh, let me see what I can do. I didn't even know if this horse is is on the my second Nine choice in the morning line. So I. I horse uh, uh, i'm gonna try and do it i almost did it yesterday with my single i'm yeah. gonna try it again today and your long shot winner did win yeah. uh, what what price was that horse? he paid 23 dollars 23 dollars so that was a good bet as well but yeah. we'll actually go and look at the miss president dress and that the 12 miss uh, crystals cantata immediately exits that race right. you can see tiz jet run a good second in there as well but Crystal's Cantata, maybe you and I both saw this race the same way, that she got into a lot of early trouble going into the first turn. There's a lot of horses, a really <laughs> big field, and sometimes that's what happens when you have horses that aren't fast enough to secure a good early position, but she gets bumped around several times going into the first turn, and unfortunately, she has to check up out of there. The rider having a really hard time settling her in between horses there, and sometimes you just can't afford to get off to a start like that it just kind of goes downhill from there and I thought that's kind of what the case we saw from her 
Uh, and she, you can even see there, she continues to check on the backside. Again, the rider just having a really hard time getting her to uh, stop being so headstrong. Yeah, I think she was just, I wrote in my analysis today that she was just bogged down between horses. She really never got a chance to really run. And then you see she ends up finishing eighth in that race. And she's she looks willing, though. Yeah. After experience all that early trouble, she continues to rally from off of the pace where we did see Tizjet close a little bit to secure that second spot as well from uh, off of the pace but overall with all of that trouble i thought she ran a really good race yeah i mean i got her in second i'm, I'm trying to be cute by singling the five tis jet but if you can go deeper you want to use a horse like crystals cantata i thought that horse never had a chance to show its ability and the two my good venezuela this is a horse who you throw into the mix too I think her two turf races are legitimate, and yeah. I often don't go this angle with, you know, maiden winners now facing winners for the first time. Uh, but she came out of a very key maiden special weight, two starts back behind Hold Harmless, who seems to be a pretty talented turf filly. She came back to face good for level Florida bred maiden special weight. And quite frankly, I think this is kind of a lateral move. It's not like this race came up really, really tough. No, and she really was impressive because she circled horses to win that race last time out, and that put her on the ticket there without a doubt, you know, uh, Bruno Tessori has been doing good work with the limited amount of horses he started, MCL Jaramillo uh, returning on the daughter of Wildcat Air, and the only concern, and I, I wrote this down, I don't know how much it means, she's in for the $35,000 tag in this optional claim. I don't know if that means that much, but just figured I'd put, put it out That's there. That's true. Uh, it's yeah. a good thing to think about yeah. because she did just break her maiden right. against a pretty quality maiden right. special weight company. But I think also the connections uh, well placed their horses, and that's why they found a lot of success, especially on the turf. Right. The, the barn has been doing very well with some of their turf runners. Uh, we'll move on to race nine, the first half of the late daily double, a first level allowance, and no Veek at four to one does draw the rail post and stays at the seven for a long distance, but now has to face winners for the first time off of that last score. We'll see that last victory against Maiden Special Weight Company. And this was kind of a lighter field, just a six horse field that day, but No Veek uh, went to the front end first time stretching out in distance of the seven furlongs, and we saw Cafetiere, who I believe was a short price favorite right. in there, heavy favorite kind of close and, and try to meet her bid, but I thought Novik was very game to the finish. And that's the reason I put her on top of my ticket. You mentioned last race that we don't usually go from uh, maiden winners, uh, you know, to step up to the allowance uh, cut ranks. I just thought uh, this horse ran well. Uh, trainer is Bobby Rabato, Javier Castellano, uh, going for two in a row. It's a $100,000 daughter of Bellamy Road. I like that performance, Lance had, so I put it on top of my ticket. And she should show speed from that rail once again today. The big question is, what's Diamond Earring going to do? Because last time out when she stretched out to the seven furlongs even at saratoga when she was facing allowance company uh, she showed a lot of speed so will uh, novik be able to take some of that early pressure and continue on from there i thought this was a tougher field obviously made in special weight to first level allowance but uh, it's it's more of a in-depth type of field so we have the six ring knocker a horse that you used on the bottom of your ticket it took her a long time to finally get her maiden victory but overall i thought it was a good race last time out and she is a horse in my opinion, that looks like she might have more upside at the seven furlongs. You know, I, I, I was torn between putting this horse up on top of my ticket. I kept going back and forth and back and forth, so I can understand it. Uh, she finished fourth behind a horse called Pursuing Fate, and the next out winner called Double Bolt, uh, going three quarters of a mile back on January 27th. I, I think this horse can run very, very well in the spot, and I did go three deep in the select for that exact reason. And the seven sing lady sing is one I would imagine you used, you used in your pick five because you picked her second right. too. And she could very well relish the, the cut back in distance of the seven eight. She's just, if that pa early pace scenario does develop where Novik goes to the lead, where Diamond Earring might pressure her, uh, this horse is really going to benefit from that. Yeah, you know, she's tried seven eighths of a mile for the first time. Three, it's, uh, you know, solid third place finishes against Allowance Company going a mile and six furlongs respectively. Maybe the six fur and a half furlongs hits her right in the eye and she gets the job done. Michael Matz, uh, Johnny Velasquez named to ride. All right, we'll wrap this card up with the 10th and final race, a maiden $35,000 race, a mile and a 16th. 
onto the turf and the four let us pray two to one on the morning line javier castellano was aboard last time stays aboard on the clash drop and i believe uh you have a little statistic for this horse yeah i wanted to show eduardo camarori last five years on the turf made in special weight to maiden claiming he's only two for 14 14 percent uh would you see the 29 percent in the money a dollar 77 roi and i just wanted to show that i think this horse is going to be a big favorite you know we like to show that there's uh maybe this is not their total game but uh, uh not bad you know 20 by 29 percent in the money it's a limited sampling but i figured i'd throw it out there i think in the big scheme of the pick five and the rainbow six this might be one of your more vulnerable favorites right. and she's meeting the right class level today i have no knocks against her because she ran her race against maiden fifty thousand dollar company but she it's almost a little bit of a a questionable drop in class, you know, the, for the 35. So how do you beat her? I'm going to try to beat her with speed. And that's the one Furlan Husky, or him, excuse me, and to the inside, this old five-year-old. He now stretches out from five furlongs to the two turns, a distance that he only has been once before in the past. But he does look like a horse that doesn't have a lot of closing speed at five furlongs. And he looks kind of like a horse that would prefer a two-distance type of turf race. It kind of scares me that they've never tried this or they haven't tried this distance for a considerable amount of time but for what it's worth bill mott with maiden special weights to maiden claimers is stretching out to from sprinting to routing 25 percent in well, a positive good. roi yeah. so that's the one that i opt for here well, yeah I, I, I had a real tough time with this race i just couldn't figure out how to go i put you know the five sonata in second but if you look stretching out to a mile in the 16th again five starts at this distance with no wins only one third so i i was struggling here after returning from that six month layoff hit the board very similar uh going a mile and seven and a half furlongs respectively so uh this one uh, I, i've taken this one with a, a a grain of salt in here and you also threw in the three tis a cinch on the bottom of your ticket last time out took the blinkers off and i thought that was actually a beneficial move it looked like he actually fared pretty well closing from off the pace he just had to face the likes of bold bid who i believe might have been dropping in class that day yeah and this horse uh, as you mentioned was seventh and last it was a seven horse field he came running late to finish second uh, tommy bush louis saez atop this gilded son of tis now I'll throw in a 15 to 1 shot there in the exacta. Second off the layoff, uh, we obviously ran back in April at Tampa and then came under the James McMullen barn last time out. And this horse you can see in the short comment lacked room at the 16th pole to the wire. And if you watch the replay, he really wasn't, it. he never really had a clear path to run the majority of the stretch. So I'm thinking that this horse has a little bit more potential. They keep him at this uh, $35,000 level. He does have to work out a trip from that outside post, but look for this one to make be make a huge advancement today. You know, I, I, every day I give out a long shot. It's actually just 16 here looking forever at 20 to one in the morning line. I just think this horse had some trouble last time out. Jonathan Gonzalez in the saddle. This horse, maybe not when it could be on that uh, late super high five ticket so uh, uh this last race what we're trying to say is wide open <laughs> yeah it's wide open and your long shot uh it, they actually scored very nicely yesterday mm -hmm. as i mentioned earlier in the show so maybe we can make lightning strike twice in the same place back to back right well let us pray <laughs> <laughs> let us pray that let us pray doesn't win that last race or maybe the rainbow six won't pay too much here today but it is a very fun sequence there's plenty of good races there in the sequence as well capping it off with that uh, finale that is uh, really really wide open the rainbow six starts in the fifth race today want to remind you that that super high five starts in the third race as well and i think that's a wrap for us because it's about that time larry colmas i, I, I can sense him here i, I don't could. even have to look you can sense larry <laughs> when he's coming to the stage it'll be right up here to give you all those scratches and changes but thanks again for joining us here on golf stream today Our day begins early, preparing for the task ahead, focused on a single goal. Then it's showtime, ready to face another challenge. And while victory may be uncertain, you can always bet on us to be at our very best.